And in studio with the New York Times bestselling author, John Gilstrap. Johnny. Good morning. I'm disturbed listening to the opener. I realize that all this time I've been re returning my used needles, and it never occurred to me to get tested for the STDs while I was there. You should do that. I know. I know. I, you know, what was I thinking? As much so, philandering as you do around the yeah, community. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Mr. Matt Harvey, Jefferson County prosecuting attorney. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Glad to be here. Uh, any thoughts on harm reduction programs, Matt? As far as? Keep them? Change them? Dismantle them? I think that's a local decision. I agree with you. It's a good answer. Sounds like a guy running for office to me. Well, I am running for office, by the way. And take a moment and tell us why. I am running for prosecuting attorney of Jefferson County. <laughs> because you want to get rid of the guy that's in the office now, right? <laughs> yeah. That guy's a bum. Get him out. But this, it's just a continuation of, of my passion for public service. And Jefferson County has been good to me, and, and I owe it to them to be to give back. And I can do that through that office. Is that a term-limited office? It's not, no. So you could do that job forever. They kept voting you in, and you wanted to do it, right? That's right. That's right. A lot. Uh, so the previous prosecutor was only there two terms, but prior to him, um, Mike Thompson it was in there maybe 24 years or maybe longer, but somewhere long okay. time. As of now, you are unopposed? As of now, I'm unopposed. Well, congratulations. So when you took over the office from your predecessor, what happened to the cases that that were in development at, at the time. Is that they just, continued? They continued. They, they have to continue. So that would be through the, the staff, the, the, the career staff carry those on, or is it just a learning curve when you first get there to get back up to speed? Well, it's, it's both. You, you, you rely on the staff to bring the institutional knowledge and, and keep the cases going, but you can't just discontinue a criminal case because there's a, a change in the elected prosecutor. That's that, that case, the, you know, I, I got, was elected, and the first week I was in court on sentencing hearings, and clearly I, I had to just get up to speed on those cases. I hadn't developed them prior to that, and it's it's they don't they, the it's court the court system doesn't care if you're just new to right. the office or not. It has timelines. Defendants have rights. The citizens have expectations. You've just got to get them done. Hit the ground running, baby. Yep. Our guest in this segment is Delegate Michael Hornby, who is also the owner of this radio and TV station. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Rob. Good morning, John. Good morning. We have a Good morning, Matt. Good morning. A marvelous picture of you up on the screen today where you were the speaker for the day yesterday. I was. Uh, it was kind of a surprise. Um, I was making fun of the speaker the day before, um, kind of jesting around with him on some stuff. And he uh, he walked up right before session and said, time to put your money where your mouth is. Let's go. And he pulled me up there. Um, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. How are you on uh, your Robert's Rules of Order? Uh, hey, I didn't get into any of that. They just let me do introductions. So, it was, it was, you know, I got enough. Uh, I got crucified from my my colleagues down here, and once they saw me up there, there was all kinds of signs, motion to uh, to vacate the chair. <laughs> um, they, they were going crazy. So, um, you, you know, it, it felt good to get made fun of by so many people. It means it means you got good friends down here. Hal Solder sent me a photo from the ground of uh, where I guess where his chair is. Uh, that you were doing that. And then I got another photo from uh, your wife, Kresha, which is the, the face on shot that we have on there now. And uh, <laughs> also, by the way, when I open up uh, my Metro News article today about the uh, House bills, uh, bills on school issues passed out of House, you're front yeah. and center, dude. Yeah, I was uh, having a conversation with Tom Swift, uh, judiciary chair at the time. So, um, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, it was really cool. blue suit, day, red tie, the vest, the white day shirts. Yesterday. Yeah, good look. day. Yes, I had my raw milk bill passed out of uh, agriculture. Yeah, um, my small business payroll pa tax credit passed out of economic development. So uh, we're making traction on uh, a lot of good bills, and education is doing. Uh, we're running a lot of bills. So, so the the small business bill. This is a bill that you attempted to get passed last year. It made a little progress, and it's going yep. to the next level now. Re review that bill for us, please. So it was a pretty simple bill last year, but it didn't really have – it was basically getting a uh, payroll tax credit for the, the portion of the payroll tax that the employer pays for a small business under 15 employees. Um, but it didn't really define – what that money was or what so we've been working on it for a year in economic development it was brought up in interims and now it's actually defined by hours and it's got a cap on the amount of money that you can actually get back 
Um, I, I think the total is ten thousand four hundred dollars the first year, six thousand the second year, mm-hmm. and three thousand the third year for new businesses that are um, that are formed in West Virginia with under fifteen employees. Um, it also lets current businesses, if they move their employees from ten ninety nine status to a payroll check and pay payroll taxes, uh, they are eligible for that uh, credit too. So I think it's 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 a much better bill this year, and I think um, we've got a lot better chance of getting it through finance. So if you start out maybe with uh, 10 employees, but growth happens quickly and you double it to 20, does this apply to your first 15 or are you eliminated? It your, no, it applies to your first 15 until you get to 25 employees. If you go over 25, then you are eliminated from the, uh, the, the tax credit. Mm-hmm. So if you get really fast growth and you're hiring and you, you get up to 25, once you're up to 20, uh, 26 employees, um, you would not get that credit. Is there a phase and out? Only for three, and it's only for three years, first three, three years, years of, of opening. Is there a phase out between employees 16 to 25? Or is it a, is it a cliff deal at 25? No, it, it, the way we worded it, it's based on hours. So you can. Um, it's based on the, the first you know, X amount of hours. So if one employee falls off and an employee comes on it's all it's it's all addressed in the bill all right let's get through some of the education bills the school bills that passed out of the yeah. house yesterday 5863 creates the patriotic access to students in schools act what is that so that's paul espinosa's bill i think it's a it, it i signed on as a co-sponsor it, it just allows for um say boys and girls club um, Boy Scouts of America, Girl Scouts of America, and and, and the people that are on those, that list, that federal list of uh, you know nonprofits, things they can come into schools and speak to students. This would include the American National Red Cross, Daughters of the American yep. Revolution, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, American Legion, Disabled American Vets, FFA, Boys and Girls Clubs, Congressional Medal of Honor Society, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, and Little League Baseball, and that's and, it. And right? there's a lot more on that list too but those are just some of the bigger ones i see and they have to be listed in title 36 of the federal code to qualify yes so there's no debate as to who's in who's out it's you're in or you're not all right that passed 95 to nothing hb 5056 is a response to a shortage of school service personnel workers what will that do yeah, so this is a, a Chris Tony bill. Um, basically, it would allow a bus driver, if he's qualified, say he's got his food handler's card, to work the um, the lunch line or, or work as a cook in the middle of the day. So it's within the school system, but it, you know we have shortages at times, and sometimes you know maybe two, three days uh, next week they have a shortage of a, a lunch person who would allow a bus driver who's qualified and who has all the, the prerequisites, and it doesn't interfe- interfere with his current position to be able to work the uh, the, the, the lunch line. Right. So, and that's the gist of it in, in different situations. And the third of these three, before we get John and Matt involved here, is HB 5179, JC's Law, designed to help teen parents continue and complete their education. So this is uh, this is a bill that it, it, it came, came to us, and uh, Joe Ellington ran it. It's basically, it lays out what happens if we have a teen pregnancy in high school and you know how much time they get off, how much time they get to recover. Um, they can do some home-based learning, and it lays out all the parameters of, of what, what should happen um, because there has been some instances where the current law was they have to be back in school within a week of having a baby, and that just didn't seem um, in line with what, you know, what we were thinking. So we laid it out in, in black and white as to what each school has to do. That is uh, a quick turnaround there, one week. Yeah. Yep. And it was one week where there was a C-section, one week where it was uh, a, a normal birth or you know, didn't take into any considerations of complications or, you know, so – I think this is a good bill that um, cleans that up and and will help uh, young ladies and young men. Mr. Gilstrap. Yeah, Mike, good morning. Um, I want to talk a little little bit about the raw milk bill. Um, If you could could review for people what what is the itch that we're scratching, is kind of my phrase of the day, I guess, and then the protections against – with everybody's worries about raw milk, right? It's not pasteurized right. and such. So, so here's the itch we're, we're, we're scratching. Right now we got this Ponzi scheme called a herd share. If you want to buy raw milk in West Virginia right now, you have to be part of a herd share or you um, need to buy pet milk is what they, they label it. Um, this herd share is you, you basically buy a piece of the cow and you have to get milk delivered 
every single week or every whatever you signed up for, whether you want it or not. So you have to get it for eternity when you, as long as you sign. I think that's ridiculous. I think um, if I choose to buy raw milk, I should be able to do that. This is a freedom bill. If um, I, I looked at the uh, – since 2016, we've had herd share, and uh, I looked at the stats. The last 10 years, only 3.9 on average people get sick from drinking raw milk, and that's per year, 3.9 per year. And that could be just you know a mild um, uh, stomach bug or something like that. So to me, we're solving an issue where we can – if I choose to, to – go over to my next door neighbor and buy some milk from them, I should be able to. Um, and, and that's what we're, we're doing. Now, this is, came from a constituent named Andrew Arnold, who happens to be two houses down from me. He's got a small farm and he's got two cows and he doesn't, he brought this issue to me and I, I ran with it. Does this open up a new market at farmers markets and such for, for dairy farmers? Not to be necessarily. Able to sell this? Not necessarily. Um, it just enables the sale of raw milk, and um, we had a, you know, it's got to be clearly labeled. So it's it's that simple. Uh, if we can, we we passed a moonshine bill, um, which is great. We can, you know, we sell cigarettes, we sell alcohol. Why can't we sell raw milk? And that's pretty much it. So. Mr. Harvey, um, I don't think people should be drinking milk regardless, but that's just really. <laughs> Yeah, you're, you're a never milker. I'm a never milker. It's 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 not meant for humans. It's meant for calves. Anyway, well, you don't. Know. That is not true. Well, okay. good glass of milk, ma'am. You, you can't beat it. <laughs> what, it's just not my cup of well, tea. What do you dunk your chocolate chip cookies in? My mouth. <laughs> I don't mess around. I, I just would, go I straight from the bag to the mouth. You than milk. I don't dip them in milk. How about Cheerios? I don't eat. I don't. I don't drink milk. Yeah, all. but do you uh, the stuff that normal people put? Milk I don't into. eat cereal. Okay. <laughs> you have a lot of a lot of problems with milk, don't you? I do. I will. I'm angry about. He's no. an anti milkite <laughs> is what I'm hearing. No. What? Well, I'm I not no inviting idea. you to dinner again, Matt. I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't invite me. I crashed your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> I just showed up. Um, hey, what what issues? I asked this with John Doyle, um, yeah. talking about his, but what? What issues do you see on the horizon in the that are going to uh, come out of the house? Oh, uh, very broad question, but I will tell you this: um, I am working very hard on one of Mike Heights' bills. Uh, him and I crafted this bill. We put his name at the top. I did not sign on as as a, as a co-sponsor, but I went and found all the other co-sponsors from around the state, including the Southern guys. Um, which is a 1% sales tax. Um, this 1% sales tax is the ability for county commissioners to put it on the referent, on, on, on the ballot, right? So we are trying, I don't know how far we'll get this year, but we are trying to solve that issue for the county. Um, but we don't want to raise taxes. We want the people to decide. So if Berkeley or if uh, Upshur or whatever county wants to implement a one cent sales tax on you know their county, they have to put it to the ballot, and the people have to decide, and the, the county has to sell it to them. Do, does so that I think do, giving? Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no. Go ahead. Does that bill contemplate a reduction in revenue in another area? It does. So, for instance, uh, it, it would remove uh, the rain tax in Berkeley County. Um, it would it would remove some of the other fees, and it comes back up for referendum every six years. So if your county commissioners or your county does not utilize the funds in the way they said they would, the people always have the ability to uh, vote it down. Does it touch ambulance or fire fees? Um, I, don't th I don't think it specifically touches that we left it kind of open for the counties to decide how they want to spend their money as well as how they want to how they want to collect it because we want to give the county commission the ability to sell this to their people so if one county wanted to use it for professional firefighters they could do that if one county wanted to say hey listen we want to use it on all of our um, ambulances they could do that we wanted to give them a broad ability to it's basically a, a county home rule, um, but I, I'm working the, the halls on this, this bill and trying to get it um, 
trying to get a, a really good group of folks. I've, I'm, I think I'm at 48 right now of folks behind it. What's the bill number, Mike? Oh, shoot. Now you're asking me too fast because it's heights. Right. Um, you can text it later. No, I, I have it sitting here on my desk. Um, Did, have you had any conversations with this, the other side of the building, with the Senate? I sure have. And um, you, is there an appetite bill, for it over there? Bill 5486, House Bill 5486, sponsored by Delegate Height, Delegate Dean, Delegate Vance, uh, Matt Rohrbach, Todd Longenacre, Elliot uh, Pritt, Jordan Maynard, uh, Dana Farrell, and uh, Mr. Campbell. That's a pretty geographically diverse list of delegates. It sure is, isn't it? Yes, um, and, I, and and that's I, by design. I'm I'm sure. Yeah, that's exactly why I'm not on it. It does. I, I, this is not an EP bill. This is. I went to. I went to the guys that were against locality pay, and I've had a lot of meetings over the last year with them. And this is the option that we think would best work for um, for the for the essentially what we're looking to do. So, Mike, when, are you getting pushback on the the one percent sales tax, and, and and what form does it take? What's the argument against allowing communities to make this decision? So, I think the pushback that I've had from a few people is they have a primary opponent and they don't want to be raising taxes. And the the argument that I'm making is this is a referendum. And the people, in the end, will get to decide. You are not raising the taxes. You are letting the people decide. And if the people don't want to raise their tax, they don't. But there are certain counties in, in this, um, this state that do want to pay for services. Uh, and I think Berkeley is one of those that really we vote all the levies and, and access levies and school levies. We, we generally vote those because we enjoy the services that they get us. I think I would think Tucker County would be another county that would be very happy I to have Tuck, a sales tax. I think to, Tucker would be extremely happy. Because, because with the tourism and a lot of out-of-state visitors, you're not relying on your West Virginia residents to fund services. Yep, and, and uh, you know you look at the Hatfield-McCoy um, uh, 4x4 trails. Oh, yeah. Um, they would be very happy um, because a lot of these counties don't have as many people paying taxes that – that's quite frankly we do, um, but they have a lot of people visiting, and tourism is booming you know, in in West Virginia. Uh, and if we can have our visitors pay a, a, a sales tax, um, it'll add up very very quickly. I think the number for Berkeley alone, uh, I was I had a meeting with the commissioners um, a few nights ago, um, and, and Mr. Wine, I, I think we were estimating between eight and twelve million, depending on growth. Delegate Michael Hornby, our guest here on the program, sole proprietor of this fine uh, radio and television station, and uh, in his second year as a member of the House of Delegates in uh, Charleston. Mike, this is uh, impressive progress you've made. You've become known as the guy who can bring people together to try to get things passed and make things happen. Mike, in your short time down I am, now. well, you know, that's very nice of you to say. I just, I communicate well with people and I can understand their issues. Um, so I can sit in a room with a bunch of coal miners and, you know, we can chit chat for 45 minutes and we, we live in two completely different scenarios. Um, but I can sit and listen to, to their issues and understand them. Um, I was looking it up. I'm co-sponsor of a hundred bills this year. I can't believe I have that many. Um, <laughs> it's tough to keep up on all of them, but they come from a very diverse, uh, in, in all over the state, uh, in things that maybe I don't understand a lot about. But once the once I sit down with people and they explain the issues, I, you know, I sit down and support them. Have you read or seen any of Amy Grady's SB six fourteen student discipline bill that she was trying to get passed out of the Senate? I have not read any of the Senate bills unless they came to the floor. So um, the, I know that we did a student discipline bill on the House side um, for the elementary schools, uh, but I have not seen and I do not um, communicate that much with um, the other senators uh, besides Barrett and, and Blair and Rucker. Um, just because you know we're busy on our side sure. doing our thing, we're going to wait till till their stuff comes over. I understand, that, and I was not actually expecting you to be too aware of it. However, just to give you the highlights of it, it's kind of on hold right now. Okay. Uh, it, it would help teachers have a bit more say in removing a problem child from the classroom, who yep. who after numerous efforts has just not 
bought into the program and is just too disruptive for other students. Is there anything similar to that in the House right now, Mike, or, or is there anything yeah. similar that has um, recently been passed? Well, we recently just passed last session um, the, the school discipline uh, bill, and I think that's being implemented. We've expanded that to elementary schools um, because a lot of the disciplinary issues are actually happening in the elementary schools too. Um, teachers being bitten, things like this, uh, being punched, kicked, uh, disruptive kids. So we've laid out that process on how that works for elementary schools, and, and um, I was happy to co-sponsor that bill too. In Amy's situation, it sounded like, and of course we know Amy is a, uh, she's the Senate Education yeah. Chair and is a classroom teacher still. However, she was running, it looked like in the description of the article, into a roadblock with the principal or principals who say, you, you, you need to love these kids more, yep. and that's fine. But some kids, it takes a bit more than love to get them to buy into the program. So whatever the discipline bill was that you passed last year, apparently she's looking to put a bit more teeth into it to give teachers support for the decisions that they make. Yeah, I think uh, we did have a lot of feedback from teachers saying that the administration in some cases were um, not applying the, the, the law we did. Um, and I know there is some talk about giving a little more teeth to that discipline bill. Uh, it's just a very sticky slope. You, you know, we, we got to make sure the administrators are following the, the, the guidelines. Are there uh, is is there any buzz about the recent uh, political debate between the four candidate governors going around the Capitol right now, Mike? Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I sat with about fifteen to twenty um, other House and, and senators. We sat in a room and listened to that debate together. Um, it is all over the place down here. Um, you know. Um, I thought it was a very lively debate. I thought all the candidates did a very good job. What is there a consensus on consensus <clears throat> on who won the debate? There is um, in that room anyway. I won't go into that though. I, I, I really, and I've told all the candidates this. Uh, this um, yeah, I, I'm staying out of it completely um, because I own the radio station and I, I can't uh, I'm not going to endorse or speak about any of the candidates, either good or bad. Mm -hmm. Is support uh, for the candidates geographical or have we broken through that? I think uh, I think it is not geographical. And uh, that, that's really I don't really want to get into that so much guys I, you know we're in the, we're in a primary race here and, and as the owner of the station i really have to to be careful about what i say we won't tell anybody <laughs> listen <laughs> this is what i get every morning listen. mike they're like hey and i'm like i can't go into that and they're like well, just tell us yeah. you're among friends here <laughs> we ask you that off you, the air i can though. tell you when the mic is off how's that yeah that and that's fine too but no i <laughs> yeah. I, I think if if the support for candidates is geographical then we're just kind of back where we've always been but if it's not, to me, that's encouraging because that represents a breakthrough, a breakthrough on at least I'm listening to ideas as opposed to zip codes. These are all extremely well-qualified candidates, and uh, I, I think geographical is out the window. I like that. I, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah. Final word is yours, Michael. What do, you got to, what do you got left to tell us about? Well, I know you're talking to uh, John Hardy next, I believe, right? Yes. Um, yeah, I'd love you to address his uh, SRO um, bill, the school resource officer bill. I, mm -hmm. I signed on to that, too. Um, we did pass a security personnel bill, but I think John's is a much more comprehensive plan. I really like that bill. Um, and it's, it, it's in finance, and he's on finance, so I, I think he's got a shot. Um, and, and I'd love to hear more about that from him. Yeah, he's not just on finance. That dude's the vice chair of finance. He is. Yeah, Thanks, Mike. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Take care. Thank you. Have a good day. 930 Delegate Michael Hornby via telephone from the Capitol. He was able to hear us a lot better than John Doyle was.